What is so special about the plants on the Alice in Wonderland ride at Disneyland? Stay tuned to find out. Hey guys, it's Erin from Disney Plant Queen. Welcome back. Today we are back at Disneyland in Fantasyland. And where else can you climb aboard a disgruntled caterpillar and head down, down, down the rabbit hole than the fabulous Disneyland ride, Alice in Wonderland? This beloved ride is dark and weird and psychedelic and existential, but most importantly, it's got awesome plants. And that's of course what we're here for, so let's head on over. As we head into Wonderland, you might recognize these leopard plants from the Haunted Mansion plant tour video. It's called Farfugium japonicum, but it's also called a tractor seat plant. I don't know why that makes me giggle, but it does every time. What can I say? I love these gigantic, vibrant green saucer leaves. They can really add an extra tropical vibe to your yard. The foliage gets pretty big and can grow to around 14 to 18 inches, but they also produce pretty lemon yellow flowers in the fall, so be sure to watch out for those. The leopard plant is an evergreen perennial, which means that those leaves will stay green all year long. Hey, here's a piece of trivia for you Stranger Things fans. The original 1958 version of the Alice in Wonderland ride actually featured a room that was called the Upside Down Room where you rode through the home of the White Rabbit. The entire version of this ride was totally different and slightly terrifying at the time, and it resulted in an overhaul in 1982, which led to the ride being more or less what it is today. All right, you've waited long enough. Let's see what's so exciting about these leopard plants seen at Alice in Wonderland. So here it is. Some of them are variegated. I'm talking about the ones that are both green and white. This white variegated variety is called the Argentia leopard plant. So who cares? Well, plant people get very excited about variegation, and that's because it's generally a more rare feature of a plant. It means that the plant may be two-toned or multi-tonal. If you remember a thing or two from your early biology classes, the reason is that the variegated plant has an uneven distribution of the green pigment chlorophyll. For your home plant collection, a variegated plant is often considerably more expensive than its original counterpart. So get ready to take out that wallet, or make a friend that will gift you a cutting of one for your unbirthday. This is a great plant for adding some interest to a shady spot or adding some big leaved quasi tropical drama to a shady garden. But guess what? This plant is also edible. The leaf stalk can be eaten. You can harvest throughout the summer once the clump gets large enough, boil them to get rid of the bitter taste, peel off the outer layer, and they can be added to salads or stir fry. I've never tried it, so I can't speak to how it tastes, but if you have, let me know in the comments. Leopard plants prefer moist, rich soil, but are not fussy about pH, and they grow best in partial sun to shade. Too much sun can wilt and burn leaves, so err on the shady side just as they are displayed on the ride. The ride then takes a quick detour outside where we see some beautiful, swaying, whimsical trees, but naturally no trip to Wonderland would be complete without the flowers, and just as the song says, you can learn a lot of things from the flowers. The Alice in Wonderland ride is immersed in a sea of impatience, you may know these flowers as busy lizzies or touch-me-nots. They are native to eastern Africa where they're known for their vivid ornamental flowers. These blossom continuously from summer to fall and this plant symbolizes motherly love. These ladies are so busy with their blossoming bonanza it seems that's exactly how they got their nickname, busy lizzies. This is also a thirsty plant. Generally it needs water every three to four days to keep the soil from drying out. But of course, no plant likes to be waterlogged and overwatering will probably kill your plant. I'm talking about root rot and withered, sad looking leaves, so make sure the soil is well draining and the container is draining properly. On the other hand, if you're not watering enough, you'll notice dropping leaves and flowers. Impatience like a full sun to partial shade situation, so be careful to avoid direct sun in hot summer weather as this plant can sunburn, so protect these beauties with some shade. If you want to check out the flowers and leopard plants on this ride for yourself, the only place you can do it is at Disneyland in Anaheim. Thanks for joining me on this plant tour of Alice in Wonderland. Are you inspired to plant your own wonderland of leopard plants and impatience? I would love to add some leopard plants to my yard, but I can sadly never find them where I live. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any Disneyland plant and landscaping fun. If there's a cool plant or ride that has amazing plants you want to learn about, let me know in the comments. And as you can see, the electric parade is back. See you next time, plant people.